I frequently want a way to quickly set up and test the motor at my workbench and I'm beginning to think, you know, these treadmills come with speed controllers. Maybe I could turn that speed controller into some kind of benchtop power supply. So, let's give it a shot. Even if you don't know how to read one of these, you should always keep this sheet. I'm going to stuff this right underneath the speed controller so I don't lose it. Right, let's have a quick review before we go too far. This big coil you see here is called a choke on the diagram. Here we've got an MC80. This is my first time getting one of these boards. It's got a separate power board. Uh, here you've got a fuse, a switch, of course the, the cable for plugging it into the wall, and a, a permanent magnet DC motor. The only items I'm really interested in keeping is the power board and the uh, MC80 in this case. I'm going to plug this in and let's see if it works. Well, looks like we figured out what the problem was. So you saw me tinkering with it for a moment there. What I ended up doing just on a hunch is pulling out these three leads, which lead to the incline motor. When I initially plugged it in, I heard a humming sound, nothing was moving, and it didn't look like that motor was trying to do anything. So I assumed it was the incline motor, and when I unplugged it, everything started fine. So I'm assuming that's why they threw it away. You couldn't start the treadmill because the incline motor was locked up, and that's why it's stuck in this incline position. So we're going to go ahead and get the speed controllers out and then let's go in the shop and see what we can do with it. Well, we've gotten everything taken apart. Now it's time for some reading. So after reading this wiring diagram a little more carefully, it looks like the signal that it's looking for to determine the speed is going to be 0 to 12 volts across the W and L, which are these guys right here on the side. W and L. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. If not, you can see it on the wiring diagram. So to test this theory, I decided to remove the power board right here, put power directly to this board, and see what happens if I just put uh, across, which ones, across W and L, if I supply a voltage, like one and a half volts from this battery, will it turn my motor? If it does, that means that I may only need to hook up a potentiometer here. Uh, I'll let you know in just a second. And putting a battery across here. Okay. So that's good news. And if these other two have 12 volts, then I think my suspicion might be correct. I'll just need a potentiometer to divide the voltage. So between high and low, I should have something like 12 volts on the meter. And I do. So what that tells me is that we've got a high, a low, and a wiper. And so I'll hook a potentiometer up to this and we ought to be able to control the speed with just this board and a potentiometer. So give me a minute to grab that. Okay, I've got my potentiometer wired up. You may have noticed for you die-hard soldering people that I didn't solder the wires on. I used this uh, heat shrink wrap and that's because my soldering is an abomination. But I am practicing, don't worry. 
So this worked out pretty good. I just cut it real long, wrapped it around several times, went through the hole, and then heat shrinked it on. So that's a good solid connection. It's not coming off. And I'll keep working on the soldering in the background before I start videotaping it. Uh, here I've just connected it up to the corresponding wires and let's see how it works. Alright, what do we got? <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen. That is beautiful. That is so much better than having this, having an Arduino, and all the other things that I was thinking I was going to have to do. I was going to use an Arduino to produce the PWM signal that this guy wants, but it turns out I can completely skip that and just wire straight up to this. So let's move on and start working on the case. So I just took a moment to look over my wiring one more time before I start shoving all this in the box, and everything looks good. I'm going to put a wiring diagram on the screen too, so I don't need to do a lot of explaining here. But the most significant thing is the switch breaks the power to both this wall adapter that I took from some something I don't use anymore that I just kept and also the power to the board. So turning on the power with this switch will turn both of those on and I needed that 12 volts for this display. I just got this guy from the local home center. It's uh, 4 inches deep, 8 inches by 8 inches. My intent right now Is to do something like this. Except maybe not that messy. I went ahead and mounted this guy to the bottom. This one is screwed down and you can see I've just hot glued this guy into the corner. All my wires are connected. I may end up going back and cutting some of these wires to make them shorter. But right now I've left everything long to make sure they'll all reach. Ideally you don't use these in a drill, but uh... Yeah, we're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> okay. So I might have made this hole a little too big. Just act like you didn't see that. There we go. That's what it should be.
I'm going to call that a success. It looks like the range is up to about 100 volts, which is fine for bench testing, and that's primarily what I want to use it for. I'm pretty excited about it. This is going to work out to be a fun addition to the shop, and I'm sure you'll see this used with many experiments and projects in the future. Thanks for watching.